Everything looks perfect to me. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to explain the artifacts again, just to make sure. This uh, artifact right here is the artifact of command that'll let me pick my items. This is the artifact of glass. I have 10% health, but five times damage. This is the artifact of sacrifice. Monsters drop items on death, but chests don't spawn, which is going to be useful later on, you'll see. Then we have artifact of swarms. Monster spawns are doubled, but monster maximum health is half. The monster spawn doubled is kind of irrelevant, but the halved one is more relevant. So we're going to begin in three, two, one, go. So how this works is, oh, okay, we got a little shrine here. That's the shrine of combat, but we don't need to mess with those. So I can see in the corner of my eye, there's a, this thing called a nude altar, and we're going to hit that right away. Because we need to go to a secret shop later on in the run that'll allow us to buy an item to make things faster. And as per usual, since it's Risk Rating 2, we're going to try and get to the teleport as soon as we can and just beat up the boss. So that's not very uh, awesome, the fact that we ended up... Uh, so we're actually going to wait a little bit because that energy orb can be very damaging. And we're okay. That's a little scary when that happens, but it happens. So we're going to go over here and try and grab this as soon as we can. Because we need this. So that if something hits me, it'll, it'll literally delete everything in my near vicinity. Hopefully keeping me alive. At least until a better item shows up, which is the white item. Which is unfortunately not either of those, because those are both green items. The reason why I need those kinds of items is because I need a little bit of a, a little bit of protection, because I'm kind of squishy right now. Because I have very little health. But we can amend to that in a little bit. As soon as we uh as soon as we uh find a white item. And the reason why I just I've gone for uh, the artifact of sacrifices so that I can pick up items while playing the level and not have to worry about not have to worry about having to grab chests along the level which is what you normally have in standard gameplay so right now it's just level one everything's pretty sane there's not much to really talk about yet but if I don't get a white item that's actually gonna be a little scary okay we're actually going to go out of our way to grab this white item for protection purposes, which is fine. So we're going to grab that, and we're going to do this. Just going to avoid that laser real quick, and goodbye. So those that, that enemy that just tried to hit me is a stone golem. They're one of the few brutes in this game. And the reason why we're going to go to the top is this item right here, called Focus Convergence. What it will do is it will take the teleporter and shrink its size, but also increase the speed at which it charges, which saves a lot of time. And so getting this on stage one is very important, hence why I immediately went to this place. So say farewell to this uh, little shot place, we're never gonna see it again. Because we got our three or more focus convergence, so we're all goody for more pretty much the rest of the run. Hopefully no hiccups arise. Uh, so another thing you can do is you can throw up loaders pylon to sort of help her get to places in, in when you don't have like a surface to cling on to, which is kind of uh, convenient. I'm trying to save the punch because there's going to be enemies coming up soon, as you can tell. So as you can see, I'll show you what the Sogus Conversions does. It does that. It does that to the teleporter boss. As you can tell, the teleporter size is now very, very small. But it's fine because since we got all that razor wire earlier, that's this item right here. Because we got that item earlier, we can just sit in here and let the and let the little enemies, like the Slusterus, try and shoot us. And in doing so, it literally destroys itself and everything in the near vicinity. Which is very convenient. So now we can sit here charging the teleporter whenever we want to. And hopefully we don't have to go with any go of any hiccups because these little little bitty wisps don't do enough damage to really affect us anywhere in the run, hopefully. Except maybe for like the blazing wisp, which I'll get to in a moment. So that's why I grabbed the razor wire so I can get rid of all the little enemies and that's why I got sacrificed because it doesn't really matter. 
doesn't really matter like what kind of artifacts I get. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, I really wanted that. So that orange item is an equipment. It's useful for uh, getting a little extra, a little extra safety because it literally gives you a, a secondary hit. So that's another one of the big brutes. That guy's a beetle guard. We will uh, just pass by him like he's nothing because he's kind of slow. Even though he's very, very quick on foot, he's not very quick in here, unfortunately. So a lot of the game revolves around flying the teleporter. Usually the teleporter is on the other side of where you spawn. In multiplayer, it's the other side where the host spawns. So if you ever play multiplayer with your friends, you should get a little hint of where it might be just from that factor alone. So this is an example of a, of a rare kind of boss called a Horde of Many. And what this essentially is, is it's basically a boss with a lot of elite brutes instead of a regular boss. We're also going to grab this for a little more safety because essentially is another area of effect attack. We're also going to... We've been very starved for wet items, so the next item I'm going to get is a backup magazine, and that gives me a secondary charge for my secondary skill, which is uh, which is this right here, which is the hook. So we're actually throw that uh, throw that pile on so we can get rid of these uh, beetle guards real quick, because they can be very annoying with their place. So as you can see, it's a lot of uh, managing the little space that you're given to by the teleporter which is amendable by the kinds of items you can find along the map. So there's some... That guy does a lot of damage, so that's why I'm just trying to avoid him. It's okay to get hit by him once, but getting hit by him, like, another time, or multiple of them at the same time, or even elite. Elite Beetle Guards are very, very dangerous. So this level can be kind of spotty. If you spawn somewhere not in the middle of the map, like on the very sides, then it gets kind of frustrating because you kind of have to go to all the places of the map just to find the teleporter because unless the teleporter just happens to be like in the middle, you have to go searching around and it's kind of annoying. So here we got two bosses close to each other and fortunately we can kill them very quickly. Uh, so next we're going to grab this ATG missile because that'll give me a chance to to more or less uh, knock out brutes out of the air. Like that bird that just happened to be there. Those guys are called Eller Vultures and they like to send shock, air shock waves at, uh, at you which really hurt. Oh, so that guy that just uh, destroyed themselves over there is called the Brass Contraption. They're the giant bells that float around and throw spike balls. Each of those spike balls alone does a lot of damage to you, so getting hit by all three of them is more or less guaranteed death. So you want to avoid them at all costs, or get rid of them as soon as you can. Even if it means getting out of your little, uh, your little chargey bubble right here. It's in, and forbid you even get like elite versions of them because that's even more dangerous. So as you can tell, teleporters go by a lot quicker than standard gameplay, which is nice. Another thing you also want to avoid is uh, killing enemies after the teleporter is uh, activated because you will get more experience and, and money, and that money is being converted to experience when you exit the teleporter. So loader is a lot of fun because you get to swing around a lot. You don't want to be like somewhere here because then you just have to go all the way back up, but more or less. It's like it's sort of like a game of golf. You get to sort of try and land the teleporter with as little swings as possible so that you can preserve it. I also like throwing my uh, pylon early on. So here's another example of a uh, horde of many. The horde of many has actually a 10% chance of uh, showing up, which can be unfortunate if if everything goes wrong. And though that particular horde of many is very dangerous because. Any enemy with more than one shot can really do a lot of damage to you, especially if it happens to be like overloading, because overloading guaranteed has like an extra shot to it. So that's an example of the, the razor wire really saving the day, because there's a lot of wisps there, but because the razor wire acts so quickly, it's it's one of the fastest acting retaliation items in the game. It literally comes out in like 10-20 frames, it's absolutely amazing. So, another thing to note is that this game 
this level right here is actually brought back from Risk of Rain 1 by popular demand because a lot of people really like this level. So you can see there's a lot of items around the place. I don't really need a lot of items anymore. I just need to get through the map. So honestly, I'm just going to try my best to just get through and just pick up as many items as I can while the teleporter just goes away. Did I charge it? Did I charge it? I'm pretty sure I hit it. Well, that's sad. <laughs> hey, Ben. A an oopsie happened. An oopsie happened? Yeah, an oopsie happened. I didn't hit the teleporter. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. It's like the monitor. It might be the end of the world. Oh, you're right. Because COVID. I'm, I'm shaking. You're right, because COVID. It might be the end of the world, and I don't even know it. What if this is the last time you get to do this, you know? I mean, there's another reason why the missiles are really useful is because I can just go over and just attack something and then the missiles will come in and just you know, give a smackdown. Also, I have to travel a bit slower because there's actively, and there's actively some enemies trying to uh, smack me with rocks. And that's those guys. Like, I have to be very careful right now. So I might actually have to just kill something just to get more... Just to get more health back. So I have to travel more slowly because the rocks sort of, like, travel in an arc. So they take a little while to fall down, so I just have to sort of play a, play a little, uh... Play a little, like, dodging game against the rocks for a little while. This happens on stage 5 because... Once you reach, the, reach, uh, reach stage 1 again through a loop, which is called looping, obviously, it, it sort of regurgitates the first couple levels again, and then you get to play them with like some sort of New Game Plus style of gameplay, where it has more enemies, different elite types, lots of other things. So you can see, I'm trying my best to avoid doing damage to enemies. Unfortunately, it's not always the case, because some enemies might hurt me, like the jellyfish. So we're on stage 7, there's one more stage after this, uh, so I'm going to just pull up some style points and just smack them, give them a smackdown, because why not. Uh, so another thing to note, oh, that's the button. There's actually buttons somewhere in the map in, in this particular stage, where if you press them, this gate over here will open, and then you can go and get an achievement for, by defeating some other Marines. <clears throat> Also, another important thing to note with the Artifact of Sacrifice is that if I were to encounter a strong enemy, there's always going to be a, a, an, another equally strong of that same enemy somewhere else in the map, and I have to look out for it. <clears throat> so I'm going to grab another ATG, so hopefully if something shows up, maybe a big big bad elite happens. So here's an example of, of an elite status I didn't talk about. These are called Celestines. They're much more stronger versions of, of an enemy. And as you can tell, even my punch didn't kill it. Even my like big strong punch didn't like, kill in one hit. Those guys do massive, massive amounts of and, and, uh, damage to you, so you have to be extremely careful of them. In casual gameplay, a lot of people sort of like shrug them off, but they actually hide enemies, which... That's what the green... the aqua bubbles were for. They sort of hide all the enemies in the near vicinity, which uh, don't let you see important important visual cues like their attacks so that guy is a clay templar he's kind of annoying because he likes to shoot his uh minigun a lot he still shows up in this level too <clears throat> we're actually getting close to the end surprisingly this is actually the last level so uh just like the last level before we uh before we uh, before we continue to the end so there's the teleporter we have to also suicide ourselves. I'm sorry for the wording, but it's honestly the only way to say it. So there's another example of why the lightning was so useful, because it let me go ahead and just like lightning those two clay dune strayers, which is the boss. And I didn't even have to like go anywhere for it. I just could have just done I could just do that and not have to worry about it. I still have to dance a little bit because Beetle Guards are also very annoying. Now something I didn't get to sh Oh, I have to be careful because there's an elite guy there. There we go, okay. 
That was a bit scary because because those birds are alloy vultures and they do a lot of damage, but if they happen to have an elite status, that's like one of these guys, how they have like little symbol, that means they're an elite. They have like extra damage and extra health. But it's really scary when one shows up because they do extra extra damage to you and they can end your run in a heartbeat if you're not careful at all. So I literally have to be on my toes right now in case another one of those guys shows up. <clears throat> I've had instances where uh, I've had blazing brass contraptions show up, which is extremely dangerous because like they have lots of projectiles and they do burn damage to you, which is really, really sad. So here we are in a moment fracture. This is where you go to obliterate yourself, so time is actually coming up very soon. Be careful. And we're going to have right about time. And yeah, Risk of Rain 2 is a great game. It's very broken. There is so many ways to uh, arrange your items to play this game that it's honestly a lot of fun. Like you can create s builds where you can become an apocalypse machine spouting missiles and killing everything on the map. Or you can just get owned by like a wisp or something. <laughs> so yeah, how was that? <clears throat> Amazing. Thank you. <clears throat> the world record holder actually has beaten this in like, I think 12 or 13 minutes. I think somewhere around there. And instead of the equipment I use, they use uh, something called the crowdfunder, which shoots little bullets. But the best part about this is that the weapon, how it's designed, is it's supposed to like slowly rev up over time, but nothing's stopping you from just like spamming spamming the trigger button and just like shooting faster than the charge up. So it's a, a, kind of funny. Like, you can just abuse the fact that you can just press the button over and over. And he uses that to like shoot out lots of enemies in the air. So yeah. <clears throat> Risk of Rain 2 is a roguelike. There was a big risk of me dying, which you saw. Thankfully that didn't happen. And yeah, that's Risk Rain 2. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Keo, for a great run. No problem. And uh, next we've got upcoming Zelda 2 Adventure of Link Randomizer. Oh, the randomizer, we'll yes! In just a few minutes. Yes, Yay. Rando! Rando! I'm so, so excited. So we will get that set up for everyone and we'll be back very soon. Don't go anywhere. Don't touch that dial. Alright, so it's me again, one final time. So as I said, we'll be getting Zelda 2 Adventure of Link Randomizer set up for the next couple of hours. Should be ready in a few minutes, but until then, I want to remind you that really quick, you've got a very small amount of time. So, you know, mark these words in your brain if you are going to donate soon. Because the file name selection uh, will actually be closing as soon as we're about to start the run, so in a couple of minutes. So if you're going to donate towards the file name for the Zelda 2 randomizer, you need to do it now. And I'm saying right now. You put exclamation mark donate in the chat, you click that link, and you go through PayPal. Because you do not have very much time at all. But something that you do have a bit more time for is the English versus Japanese voices bid war, which will be in about two hours time from Octopath Traveler. So you do have a bit more time for that one. So, you know, if you're going to donate, look towards Zelda first, because that's the, the main one, the ticking time bomb coming on right now. So, uh, as I said, it's my last, uh, last session coming up here for the marathon, so I appreciate you all sticking with me. Uh, up next, replacing me, will be my man Poka Fesovate, all the way from Poland. And, uh... 
he actually donated a dollar during the run that went towards the Zelda file name, and he said in his comments, Ben, I think you might like my file name of choice. And he actually listed the file name as Fernando Martinez Emotion. So, if any of you guys know GTA Vice City, you'll know that I am a heavy speedrun of that game. It's my main game that I like to run, been doing it for a number of years now. And Fernando Martinez is actually the radio host on Emotion 98.3 on there. So, it actually, yes, Fernando and Martinez are both eight characters long, so... It fit absolutely perfectly. So yeah, thanks for Poker to the for the donation. And I will be letting him take the floor. So to so everyone who's stuck with me in these last couple of hours, I appreciate you all being here. Appreciate you all helping out with the marathon and supporting, donating, you know, telling your friends, all that great stuff. So thank you very much, and I'll let Poker take the floor. Uh, so, uh, as as uh, mentioned already, uh, my name is Poker Fisavate, and I'll be your host for the next two hours for the entirety of uh, Zelda 2 Randomizer. And um, yeah, as Ben said, you really do not have much time to donate for uh, the name, the the file name choice. Right now, my up. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, if you want any other options, I bet you you do, then uh, get your donations in right now, because uh, the run is about to start, and as the name file name choice suggests, uh, this is going to be uh, something that actually ends at the very beginning of the run. Um, Alright. Uh, just remind you, we're NASA 2020, gathering donations for Save the Children. Uh, Save the Children works in the heart of communities where they help children and families help themselves by providing education, infra infrastructure, healthcare, and protection from harm. Save the Children works closely with other organizations, governments, nonprofits, and a vari 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 variety. Variety. There we go. Variety. Variety of local partners, uh, while maintaining their own independence without political agenda or religious orientation. Help us to help them in making the world a better place. Thank you all for donating. We are actually very close to reaching the $2,400 mark, which is absolutely amazing. Thank thanks to everyone who's donated so far and uh, to everyone who's planning to do so. You can snipe the, the $2,400 right now with just $9. Uh, you can... Add the, you can add the bidding for the bid war uh, of the file name choice uh, on top of that. If you'd like, uh, we still have some uh, some more bid wars, bid wars coming your way. Uh, as for Zelda, we also have a, another one just for this game, which is a sprite choice. And only error right now uh, has $2.00. Uh, bid for it. Uh, the rest is at zero, and you have Iron Knuckle, Link, Ruto, Samus, Simon, Stalfos, Vase Lady, and Zelda to choose from. So if you'd like any of them to win instead of Error, uh, make sure to get those donations in as soon as possible, as Zelda is about to start very soon. Um, we are going to. Okay, I'm just being said right. Now. I'm just uh, being told right now that the sprite was is not available anymore. So, excuse me for that. Mm. 
that was uh, that was a mistake on my end. Um, just to remind you, we're go we're we've been live uh, throughout the past weekend, the last one, and we are live now up until uh, the end of Sunday. If you'd like to uh, see the entirety of our schedule, it's available right now in the chat. Uh, the links are provided for both weekends. If you see something interesting that's already been done, that's already been uh, speedrun at NASA this year, uh, just visit NASA's YouTube channel and either uh, the speedruns are either already there or will be there in a couple days. Uh, that's youtube.com slash NASA Marathon as, uh, as you have it on the intermission screen. Alright, um, just as, um, as an add-on, we'd like you to see uh, a quick video from Save the Children, which NASA is supporting this year. I will tell them to give me a whole tub of chocolate. <laughs> I will go in space if I was a president. I'll tell, I'll tell the people to stop chopping down trees every day. Just cut about 20 a day, probably 20 a day, not like 50 each day, just 20. If I was president, I'll be nice to people and make sure they're not mad. Bad, or mad. <laughs> I would make a new law and say, do not smoke around children, do not eat and drive, do not drink and drive. The president should help kids a lot. Because if we didn't have kids, then why would the earth be toys? I approve. I approve. I approve this message. I approve this message. 